As the science becomes more and more developed, temperature has become one of the most important and useful measures for humanity, being used for medicine, sciences, and daily activities. But have you ever asked yourself, what are you actually measuring? Well, if any curious, then welcome to the wonderful world of thermodynamics. One common misinterpretation that we have about temperature is that we consider it to be heat. More specifically, people confuse between temperature and the feeling of one. But you may ask me now, what is the difference between these two notions? Well, to visualize them, let's consider a simple experience. We're taking a book and a metal wallet and placing them next to each other. After a certain period of time, the metal wallet will feel much colder than the book when touching them. It is partially true because that's what you stand saying, I'm not beating you, right? In fact, there is no difference between their temperatures. They have been in the same surroundings for a long period of time and have reached a thermal equilibrium with their environment, which means that they are both at the same temperature. All of that brings us to the main point. What are in reality temperature and heat? In the most basic way, temperature is a measure of how much kinetic energy, which is energy of motion, is in a system. Said differently, we can describe temperature as the measure of the agitation in a system. On the other hand, heat is the energy transferred between systems when they are at different temperatures. A radiator will, for example, transfer energy to your room or your hand to the wallet, which creates the sensations of warmth or cold. So when you're touching something, you are not actually feeling temperature, you are feeling the rate in which heat is transferred either towards or away from you. Which means that if an object is hotter than another, it doesn't necessarily have a higher temperature, it just means that it conducts heat faster. Now having all of that in mind, we can explain why the floor feels colder than the carpet, why the cake mold is always hotter than the cake, or even some strange phenomenon like this. So, to run the motion of the pollen is what we call Brownian motion. It had been discovered by the botanist Robert Brown in 1827 and has intrigued the scientific community for many decades until Einstein arrived in 1905. So what Einstein seen is that the water molecules in agitation randomly collide with the tiny grains of pollen, theory that had been verified by Jean Perrin three years later, confirming at the same time the existence of atoms and molecules and opening the way to quantum mechanics. Today, Brownian motion has become a general concept with a variety of applications, from statistic mathematics to economics and even life decision making and so many others. But above all, Brownian motion summarizes the final natural truth. Fluctuations are not part of life, they are what make us.